Welcome to Bridge the Gap Ministry, a live hour-long webcast where we will be talking about what makes us different, what we have in common, and how we bridge the gap. This is a casual conversation powered by WebcastOneLive.com. Let's get started. Now your host, Mike Ahmed. Well, hello, everybody. I am glad you're here with us today. Uh, on our program. Uh, this program will always be aired <clears throat> as long as the Lord willing. will be aired every Thursday, 6.30 Central Time. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a good time. It's a time that we come together to, uh, to really uh, get refreshed by the Word of God. Uh, since the beginning of the program, we have been talking uh, taking different examples and different stories of the Bible uh, and and how these these men and women, uh, what they faced and how did God come through for them. But above all, what I see was common between them is their faith, is the way they, uh, they the way that they have actually... Um, faced the situation or the way they tackled the situation or the way they handled what was thrown at them uh it the the common ground was was the worship and and the fear of god and that word fear was the word reverence to god is their conviction of who god is that actually god does exist that god is capable that god uh will see them through no matter what it is <clears throat> and the attitude that that was common uh, among all these stories that we have shared was the the attitude of uh, that they don't get overwhelmed. They don't let the enemy succeed in what he's trying to do. And uh, we've seen through those stories that the, basically the enemy uh, throwing this uh, uh, obstacles uh, their way just to get them to. Uh, to worry rather than worshiping God, because that's what the enemy is all about, the enemy of our God. He is the enemy of our God. He's the enemy of our relationship with God. That's really who he is, and the Bible calls him the devil. And the the Bible tells us also that the devil only comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give life and to give it more abundantly. And, uh, and we, we, we see that, that common ground, and I hope, uh, as you have followed our program so far, that you were able to grasp that. So today, I'm going to uh, go back and forth with some of those stories, but I'm going to add a couple, a couple of more uh, situations that people of God have faced, and we're going to see the same common ground. So today, I hope you brought your Bible with you. And open it to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's an amazing story. It excites me. I I hope you're excited uh, today as much as I am. I I couldn't contain myself. Uh, I have been seeking God all week since last week, since I've been with you on the program. Uh, You know what, what he have on his heart to talk to you. Because I believe with all my heart that I'm a mouthpiece for God, and you are too. God called us all to the ministry of reconciliation. He has entrusted us with that ministry of reconciliation. And that's what Bridge the Gap ministry is all about, and that's what the program is all about, is to bridge the gap. Uh, How do we bridge the gap? Is basically present uh, God's word to you, uh, to help you to, to 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 see things from God's perspective, to see how much God loves you, and how important it is to love others, and that's what bridges the gap. Because we're all different. I mean, God intended for us to be different because that's what makes the beautiful world is because we're different, and different is is not bad thing. It's what we make out of it is whether we we think is another person of a different color is our enemy or not, or another person of a different heritage is our enemy or not. That's, that comes from lack of education. That comes from 
a closed mind. The people that thinks that way, they are of closed mind. We all have one thing in common. If you, you know, if you get cut uh, by accident on something, we all bleed the same blood color. My blood color, I'm, my skin color is different than my wife, but yet, you know, if if I bleed, if she bleed, and 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 it came on the carpet, I have no idea which one is blood. Whose blood was that? Correct. You don't have to agree with it. I I threw that at you right it's, away. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, uh, I mean there isn't. I mean there is there is a there is a common ground between all of us, and uh, bridge the gap ministry was intended and was birthed based on what I have felt and seen when I, I I see all these the 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 crud that goes all around and 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 people hurting one another because they're just simply don't understand each other because they simply don't know each other's heritage and bridge the gap ministry was intended to educate through the history that is given to us from the Bible to educate us and get us to realize that we have a common ground that we all are saved by grace regardless what our background is you believe on jesus as the messiah you confess him the messiah regardless who you are what your background is your common ground is the word salvation and in the greek that word is sozo regardless what you are and it's by grace you are saved it's not by your own works it's by grace through faith that you were saved. And because of that, we realize that how much God loves us and how much he intended for us, how much, how much he has in store for us. He has dreams about you and me. Do you know that? God has dreams about you and me. We see them through those stories. God's dream for you and me. And because of that, then he entrusts us with the ministry of reconciliation, which is the ministry that bridged the gap between God and people, people and people. So I hope you came as excited as I am. I hope you 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 have your Bible with you and uh, and you you turn it to Second Chronicles chapter twenty. We are going here in a couple of minutes. We're going to take a short break, and uh, we, we're going to see. Uh, another man of God, another human being, no different than you and I, faced another situation that was in that was intended to get him to worry rather to to worship. I want you to remember this: when you when there is something you is thrown your way, whatever you're facing today, it was intended to throw you off course by getting you to worry and <clears throat> instead of worship. So we'll be right back. Just give us a minute. We'll be right back. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. So I brought a long couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I am Administrative Manager. I am the Senior Technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> 
So you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house? We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going though, I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed right or it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. back to Bridge the Gap Ministry. We believe Jesus is God and wants you to join His kingdom and our conversation at 1-855-244-0077. Now here's our host, Mike Ahmed. Well, praise God. That's awesome. Okay, I am so excited. Jehoshaphat was, <clears throat> was the king of uh, Judah. At that time, Second Chronicles chapter 20, and uh, Jehoshaphat was a king. And then, uh, at that time, the armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Mennonites declared a war on Jehoshaphat. Messenger came and told Jehoshaphat that a vast army from Edom's marching against them from beyond the Dead Sea. I, I have been... I have been in that area, uh, you know, I grew up in Egypt, and I have been to Israel, and my wife and I, we have been to uh, Jordan together, and that's that's where that area, what was taking place, <clears throat> and they said, they're coming against us. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news, but look at what he did. It's in the same verse, but by this news, and begged the Lord for guidance. He turned to God right away. You remember what happened, and uh, what what happened with Daniel. You remember what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember what happened to Joseph. Remember what happened with Abraham. I mean, that's what was common. They turned to God, and uh, I remember when Abraham. Remember in in Genesis chapter twenty two. I believe that's where it was when. Uh, you know, Abraham had waited for a son, uh, for his son Isaac, and his wife finally got pregnant in the old age, and he had us. He had Isaac. He already had Ishmael prior to that by him helping God's plan and and marrying Go, uh, <clears throat> Hagar. But God says, "No, nope, my promise is going to come that Sarah will give birth it, at age ninety. I will give birth to a child." And uh, I'm sure that was not very good news for a lady of that age. and uh, But, I mean, that's how God promised. I mean, God does impossible things. Is anything impossible with God? No. And that's what he always wants us to realize. And that's why he's given us the word. That's why those stories are about. Just We realize that God is still on the throne. Jehoshaphat turned to God right away and asking for guidance. Abraham, <clears throat> in Genesis chapter 2, it was even God himself that tested him. He says, now, okay, Abraham, go and sacrifice your only son. 
whom you love, you're going to sacrifice him for me. You're going to put him on the altar for me. And the Bible tells us that Abraham woke up early in the morning, took his son and took his donkey, took every everything in there, told his servants, we are going to, you need to stay here and we are going to go farther and me and the boy, we will worship and we will be right back to you. See, he knew the Bible also tells us the reason for Abraham's uh, <clears throat> faith was his faith was in God. Whether if it's God himself uh, go through with the plan and, and have him sacrifice his son, he believed that God would raise Isaac to fulfill his plan because God says, I will, your seed, Isaac, will be, will have many seeds through Isaac. So he believed God's promise. God's promise for you and I is that he have a plan. He have, he have a good plan for you and I. And we need to believe that. We need to wake up. I, I, I wake up every morning. I thank him for what I have and for his plans for our lives, that he have a wonderful plan. That's what he promised in the word. So Jehoshaphat turned <clears throat> to God and asked for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord for help. That's a great leader right there. He turned everybody to the Lord to seek help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courts at the temple of the Lord. He prayed. Here is his prayers. This is an awesome model of prayer. He said, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Uh, this is, I, I, I love, I love this. And I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they told the king uh, that uh, he, he brought them, he says, hey, you, why did you disobey my order <clears throat> that I have given? Because now I'm going to have to throw you in, in a fiery furnace. And, uh, their attitude was, was God is able to deliver us. And if he is not, we're still not going to worship you. We're still not going to bow before you. Why? It's because they knew that God is able. Here is a situation. The situation was very, very overwhelming. Think about this. The, those armies, all these three armies coming from everywhere to devour Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel in the in that part of the country they're coming from everywhere they're coming against them they they just gonna they just gonna squeeze them out and uh, it's bigger than anybody and uh, you know that was described to him the messenger came and told him that was a great armies are coming against you waging war against you I'm sure, I'm sure the first thought that crossed his mind, how huge that is. We are nothing compared to them. That's Jehoshaphat's thought. Right away, the enemy will tell you how little you are. The enemy of God, the enemy of the faith in God, the enemy that wants you to worry rather than worship. That's what he will say. But Jehoshaphat stopped the nonsense and start talking to the situation about how God is, how big God is. He is the only God in heaven. He is more powerful than any of the kingdoms. He controls everything. That's what he said. He begins to describe God. You face something today? You, you tell them how powerful your God is. He says, no one can stand against you. No one. Remember David? We talked about David in the, in the earlier stories in the, in, uh, 
about how David faced Goliath. What did he say to Goliath? He said, you came against me with a, seer, with a sword and a spear, and I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. And he described to him what God will do for David. My friend, you got to do the talking about your God. Everybody's showing off. The enemy's showing off to throw you off. Show off your God. He's talking to you, somebody, maybe you're in school and somebody's talking to you, trying to tell you <clears throat> you're worthless, you, you, you're never going to mount up to nothing. Uh, start talking to them about your God and the plans he have for your life based on the word of God. That he, he said, my plans for you is to prosper you and to make you great. That's his intentions. But he's just not going to, you know, come and poof, here, here you are, now you're, you're king or a ruler, whatever it is. No, he's going to do it with you because he likes you to enjoy the victory. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He talked to the situation in his prayer. That's what a worship prayer is. A worship prayer is a prayer that you talk about the ability of God. His, his history in your life. Did he ever, have he ever done anything for you? If you confess Jesus as the Messiah, he already did. He saved you. He saved you from eternal damnation. He saved you from eternal separation from God. He promised you of heaven. He promised to dwell in you. He, do, he even promised that when he comes back, whether you were dead or alive, that he will bring you back with him. And he will reign on the earth for a thousand years. He's going to utilize what he put in you and what you went through. See, when fire is turned up, it's because your victory is right on right at the right around the corner. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the the <clears throat> the furnace was turned up so high that it burned up the soldiers that threw them in. And why was it turned up so high? It's because their victory was around the corner. The king saw their God, saw that they were in the right place. He was in the wrong. He declared that the God of Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the God that everybody will turn to. See, that's, that's the victory that God has in mind. Anyway, so Jehoshaphat, that's what he did. And take note of that. He turned to the, to the situation in prayer and begins to talk about how big his God is. You know what would that do to you? When you start talking like that, you start talking about how big your God is and how awesome he is. He is the only God in heaven. He's the, he, he's, he controls all the kingdoms of the earth. He's, he's in charge. He's powerful. No one can stand against him. Oh, my, my. Your spirit will be lifted up so high that they will just, you know, they will have to peel you off the ceiling and instead of worrying. That's, that's how I see it. And, uh, Look at what happened. <clears throat> he said, no one can, st verse 7, O oh, our God, look at this. Did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? Now he's, see, he's talking about history. That's a prayer of worship. Do you, do you see the pattern? It's a prayer of worship. You talk about how big your God is, not how big your obstacle is. Not how big what's facing you. You talk about how big your God is. And then he talked about past experience. How did God come through for them? See, that builds up your faith. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, I'm an engineer. I think of everything had, you know, to have a formula, had, you know, you have have dimensions and and patterns and different things. Those are the patterns I see. 
is is first of all how you build your faith is worship you worship by talking about your god talking about past experience because that will bring you to the place where you are standing as high as god above the situation see God is mighty. God sees the situation from above. See, that's the difference. He sees it from above. And he wants you to rise up to where he's at so you can see it from above because you will see it at its right size. If you look at something from above, you will see it at, as, at its right size. <clears throat> When I used to fly, I mean, I, or we just came back from a trip. I mean, as, as, that, as that plane rises above the earth, everything starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it disappears. And that's what that kind of prayer of worship will do for you, will raise you up where you will see that situation at its right size, it's nothing. It's little. I know, I know. You're going to say, Brother Mike, you have no idea what I'm facing. My friend, I do know what you're facing. I am not belittling what you're facing. I am not, I'm not undermining what you're facing. I am not at all. I'm just trying to help you to get the victory sooner. I've been there. I've been there, not because you see a smile on my face and you see, it, you know, you think, I, you know, I had it made. I never faced anything. It is not true. It's nonsense. I faced so many things. It will make your hair fall out just like me. I faced a lot. And my friend, it's the faith in God that brought me through. And it's the love of the people around me. That's the formula. So let's, let's plug in. Now you know my heart. So let's look at it. Let's see it as I intended to communicate it to you. And uh, so he just looked at the situation based on what it is. God is bigger. The situation has to be smaller. Praise God. And he described... What was the past experience with God was? He says, didn't you, weren't you God the one that drove these people out of here when we arrived? And did you not give this land over to us and to our descendants or to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Way back then. He says, your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. That's the kind of faith that we are looking for today you know we are going to take a short break to hear from our sponsor because i tell you what their faith in god is what put us on that show for you today to spoon feed you and and encourage you because i know someone is facing some things that what it looks like bigger than you are but by the end of this show Oh, my, my, my. They gonna, the enemy is going to wish you never woke up. <laughs> we'll be right back. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little, until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome. 
not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to Bridge the Gap Ministry. We believe Jesus is God and wants you join his kingdom and our conversation at 1-855-244-0077. Now here's our host, Mike Ahmed. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. So, you know, again, uh, you know, there is, there is your attitude will determine your altitude. I remember that very much as I used to fly small airplanes and and uh, learn a lot from flying and knowing, you know, the, the, the how to size things. And uh, I, I've learned a lot. Actually, I've, my, my prayer life improved during flying time. <laughs> I'm, I don't know why I'm laughing because uh, somehow I heard either, you know, in my mind just heard was like, yeah, I would be too <laughs> if I'm flying with you, right? Right. Must have worked. You're still here. <laughs> I'm still here. Yep. Yep. That's right. Uh, my wife it looks amazing today. And, and I, I wish you say something. Yeah. Look at her. She looks beautiful. My wife is. Thank you. Yeah. Praise God. And she's manning the, the chat and, and, uh, <clears throat> and we have Ryan there on, on, uh, and our producer is taking care of business. And so well, we'd love to hear from you, my friend. We would love to hear from you. Uh, you know, send, send us a question or, you know, call us with a question or with a comment. Maybe you, you've, God has come through for you before. Tell us uh, how did you get the victory? Uh, maybe you have an advice for somebody else. Because, you know, uh, your experience... Somebody else might relate to your experience than with mine. But, you know, I'm, I'm on a show, and I will keep on talking until I hear from you. And uh, we'd love to. As a matter of fact, uh, we, we can even Skype with you. Technology is wonderful. We can Skype from someone from across the world. We do that every day. Uh, not every day, every, every chance we have. <laughs> I don't know why, why I said it every day. Not every day, once a week. Yeah, once a week we we Skype, and uh, <clears throat> and it, it comes. We come all close together because uh, God is good. I'm I'm glad for the technology as it is, and uh, so so now Jehoshaphat continued with his prayer, verse ten. He said, "And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing." Well, you know, he, here we go. He said, he said, you would not let, let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they are rewarding us? For they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. Well, first of all, I'm glad he's addressing the situation. He's, he's saying that that's, you know, because God is a counselor. 
I mean, something is on your heart. It's bothering you. You know, I mean, you were dealt, uh, you know, a bad hand. Isn't that what you call it? A bad hand. You were yeah. dealt a bad hand. You were dealt a bad hand. You were stabbed in the back. And, and, and you're hurting over it. Jehoshaphat was hurting over it. Don't mistake in that. Don't mistake that for something else. Like informing God of what's happening. God knows. I mean, he tells us in the Bible in Matthew chapter 6 that he knows even the hair on your head. Not one of them will go unnoticed, will fall. This, he knows the sparrows. He feed them. He said you know, he knows that you need food and, and, and clothing and shelter. And uh, there's nothing wrong by asking God, but make sure that you are not there to just to inform him of the situation. You pray there as a prayer of faith. Okay, God, I mean, this is, this is the situation I'm facing, and that's why it bothers me. There is nothing wrong with that. But you continue that with a prayer of faith. Jehoshaphat started out with a prayer of worship, which is a prayer of saying how exalted God is over the situation. Now he's talk, and, and then the second step was talk about the past experience. How did God come through for them? Then the third part, now let's, you know, I'll say what's bugging me. And that's what he says. So verse 12, he says, Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty arm that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. That's an awesome, I, I love that model prayer. And, and again, this is how you put it in perspective. Verse 13, it says, As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon, upon one of the men standing there, and he was he came from uh, from these descendants coming back all the way to Asaph. And he said, this is, this is the, the person that had, had a word from the Lord. Verse 15, he said this. He says, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours but God's. Woo! I'm having a Holy Ghost fit. This battle is not yours, but God's. That's, he said this. He says, don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. I got this. <laughs> I like it when God says that. Is that in the Bible? Yes. I got just, this. I just read that. Exactly. I got this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if uh, he doesn't mind it, this might not use my own slangs. <laughs> I got that. The slangs. The slangs, yes. Yeah. I mean, I like, see, that's what he said. He says, Jehoshaphat and all you people, don't worry about it. Don't worry about how big that army was because that battle is not yours, it's mine. Woo! I like that. That's right. See? With Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where was God? right there in the fire with them. When Daniel got thrown in the lion's den, who delivered him? God shut that, that lion's mouth. When David fought Goliath, <clears throat> it was God was right there with him, delivered Goliath into the hands of David. And Abraham, in all his journeys, the times he even messed up and lied, God was still on his side. See? Because the victory is right there. And God wants you to enjoy the victory. And him, he will enjoy the glory. It's, it's a win-win. I, I like, I like God's, God's attitude. He said, he said, the battle is not yours but God. Now he's giving them instruction, verse 16. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the, accent, the, the ascent of, of Zez at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jerul. But you will not even need to fight. 
He told them already. He gave them the strategy. See, that's, you listen. You worship. You pray. You listen. That's the word. He gave the instruction which way to go, where to go. And he reminded him again, but you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. Woo! Watch me do this. Watch me do this, boys. Ha <laughs> ha! I love God. He's, he's awesome. I mean, I, he have every right to be cocky about this. <laughs> I stand there. I mean, I, you know, I do it on a smaller scale, you know, right? When did I ever say to you, I got this? I hear it on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> and God says, hey, this is, you go this way. You see them coming from this direction. And you leave it to me, boys. See me go to work. I like that. I love that. I don't know if you read your Bible like me the way I read it, but that's how my mind works. It's awesome. It's exciting. He said, "You." He said, "Take your position. Stand still. Watch me." He says, "He says, he is with you, O people." This is the the prophet is saying this. He is with you, O people of Judah and. Jerusalem, don't be afraid or discouraged. Go out against him tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Verse 18, then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of uh, Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with if with a very loud shout. I love that. I mean, my friend, the plan is, if the plan is given to you based on the, the word of God just like this, and it is. God is on your side. It says Hebrew 13, 5, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Actually, that word never, it means it's a continuous basis. Never, 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 ever leave you nor forsake you. That's what he says. I have plans for you, plans to prosper you, and plans to give you good life. That's the plans he have. You have the plans. You know the plan. You know God's intentions toward you. And uh, so they were shouted loud. They, they, now, you, I mean, they have the victory. They have the plan. God says, I got this. You don't have to worry about it. Then don't worry about it. God is saying to you, I got this. Switch. My friend, you can you can flip that lever over from one direction. A liver or a lever? I don't know how you pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? A lever. A liver is inside your body. Not inside your body. <laughs> what is it? Say it again. Lever. Lever. I don't know. That's a part of that English part so <laughs> that don't... And I can't wait until you speak Arabic, and I'm I'm looking forward to correcting you. I'm looking and forward I, to it as well. Thank you for correcting me. It's awesome. Okay. Well, I don't flip think I got the to flip. switch. That's better. That's better. I need to avoid the words that I, I can't get them right. I mean, that's not faith. I get them right. It's just that's how I hear it. I'm just helping the people that are listening. I'm okay. the mic whisperer. Yes, yes, you are. Flip the switch. From worrying to worship. Do that. Give it a shot. God is true to his word. All right. Here. Let's let's say some more. Then that's what they said. They just flipped the switch. Then look at that. Verse 20. Early the next morning. I love that every time. It's early in the morning. I love that. Because I'm a morning person. I love being up early. Not too many people care for that. Early in the morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen, listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. Believe in the Lord your God, 
and you'll be able to stand firm. I love that word. Do you believe in the Lord your God? If you do, you'll be able to stand firm. That's a fact. Those are facts. Those are truth, actually. Remember, we talked about the difference between facts and truth. Facts is what you're facing. The truth is God's word. Facts can't change the truth, but the truth can change the facts. See, that was a prime example. The facts was three armies coming to, to destroy Israel. They are, Israel was no match to them. But the truth says that God is on their side. And the truth will change the situation. Watch what's going to happen. Watch what's going to happen. He says, after consulting the people, verse 21, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. See, they haven't seen, or I mean, the, the victory has not manifest in the natural yet, my friend. But they're acting as so. See, Mark eleven twenty three and 24. Mark, Mark eleven twenty two 22 says, Jesus answered the disciples and he says, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. And he explained it in verse 23 and 24 that if you believe that you received what you asked for when you prayed, you will have whatsoever you said. In another word, the believing happens when you pray, not when you see it. Not when it's manifested. The believing takes place right then, right when you pray. See, that's what he said to them. You will have, you, because of this, because, because you believed in God, you will be able to stand firm and you will leave his prophets. You will be, a succeed, you will be successful. And then they begin to sing and this is what they think. It, it's give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. And look at this. Look at this. Oh my, my, I can't, I can't wait. I, I'm going to probably jump off my seat here on verse 22. At the very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the very moment they began to sing and to give praise. Woo, something happened. Something happened. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. Wow. See, I'm, I'm getting excited here. <laughs> they began to fight among themselves. <clears throat> See, something happened. <coughs> When you begin to sing and praise the Lord, it's something can't be contained. There is two things. It's that's just a button for heaven. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, those <coughs> something up in the air, but we believe God for his anointing will will stop this. <coughs> <coughs> praise God. So what happened? They release praise, God releases victory. That's how it goes. It's a seesaw, right? <clears throat> you put the praises on this side, you will be ejected up with victory. I like that. Praise releases victory. Because praise comes as a result of the reality that you have the victory. That's what praise is. And, and once you release the praise, the victory is manifested in a natural. See, you got to understand the timing of this. There is a timing here. There is, you, you got to understand, we're ahead. We're ahead 
if we're in faith. See, the natural will have to catch up with us. That's a fact. Got to get that to your head. You, you, you were created to be ahead, not behind it. You're created to be proactive, not reactive. Why? It's because you're ahead. See, see, God is in you, is the alpha and the omega. God in you is the one that knows the end from the beginning. So you're ahead if you're in faith. The natural have no choice but to catch up with you, however far you are. And that's what happened to them, my friend. I hope you see that. I hope you get reality. I released God's anointing on his word that you will get reality, of it, that it will, it will just grab you and, 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 and get you in that reality. That you're ahead with God, you're ahead of the situation, and the world and the situation will have to catch up with you. I'm speaking that over you, and I believe it is in Jesus' name. So he said, as soon as they began to sing and to give praise, the Lord, the Lord caused the armies of Amon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Amon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. Whoa, the, God didn't lie, did he? He said, you, don't, you just go against them, but you don't need to fight them. See, God have a plan. <laughs> Why did he say to them, you don't need to fight against them? Because he's going to make them fight each other. That's awesome. He didn't even have to send angels. He just, he can turn their switch on each other. They're killers. They're coming to destroy the children of God. They're killers. And they're not going to be satisfied. So he just turned their switch. Boom. Boom. Because he's over everybody. <clears throat> they killed each other. Look at this. So when the army of, look at this. After they destroyed the army of Seir, see, those are the other two armies. After they destroyed them, they began attacking each other. They just, they just, that's it. They're wild dogs. That's, that's basically what they ended up being. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point, in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not single one of the enemy had escaped. Woo! Wow. I am about to jump off my seat. Do you need a seatbelt? Yes. Look at this, verse 25. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. That's all they got to do. I love this. You let God fight your battle for you as he promised. You got a job, and it's going to be a rough one. You only thing have to do is gather the plunder. Woo, I like that. Do, do you like that? I like that. That's the job I like. Yep. All they had to do is gather the plunder. Look at that. They found so much equipment, clothing, and valuable, more than they could carry, that there was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. Wow. See, I'm trying to calm down right now. Wow. Wow. Three days to gather the plunder because there was so much of it. Well, let me ask you this. Or I want you to think, not asking you. Let, I want you to think about this. Why are these three armies coming to a war with Israel? 
intending to destroy them. And they bring with them so much stuff. Clothing, jewelries, you name it. Why did they have, why would they go to a war bringing so much with them? The reason for that is, you know what? God knew their intentions from day one. They came over there. They, they just thought that, you know, we're going to go take over Israel and we're just going to live in that land that is filled with milk and honey. We just gonna, we're just going to make the whole thing. I mean, it's going to be taken care of. Are we going to kill them and we're going to move in at the same time? See, God knew that. He already had the plan. We'll prosper Israel no matter what. They killed each other, and they left Israel a great deal of wealth. That's, that's the job that you will have to do if you believe God and you believe his prophet. You will be able to stand firm, and you will succeed. That God will fight the battle for you. You wouldn't have to fight it. All you have to do is to gather up the plunder and be blessed out of the whole situation and enjoy your victory. How you do that? Prayers of worship. Praise releases the victory, releases the blessings. Prayers of worship and adoration to God will bring you higher than the situation. You'll be able to see that as at its size. You take God's attitude. You know that God is on your side. You take God's attitude <clears throat> and talk to the situation about your God. You will get to that place where everything coming out of you is faith. It was I had an in, in, intention to, to talk about another story of, of, of Paul and Silas in the book of Acts, but we're running out of time. And until next week, do me a favor. Turn your switch over to victory. Turn your faith in God. Worship God. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be at school, you could be at work, you could be at home. Worship can be simply thoughts on God. You see, you can turn your thoughts around. Whatever you're facing, you can start thinking on God. Worries will start leaving. And your worries will turn into worship. And when it turns into worship, the victory would be manifested because it has to catch up with you. You're ahead. You and I are ahead because God is on our side. He made us the head and not the tail. He made, he made us to be above and not beneath. I speak over you blessings. I speak the truth of the word of God over you that you are the head and not the tail and you're above and not beneath. The victory is yours. And until next week, I pray that you have someone that you can encourage and you bridge the gap. And together, we'll be celebrating one day. We will have a huge party. Jesus said, I'm going there to prepare a huge party for you. I'm looking forward to that. He's the guy to party with. I'm looking forward for that day. Until then, may God bless you, makes his face shine upon you, and gives you favor. Amen. Bye-bye.